Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. There will be background sounds of birds tweeting outside in the garden because it's 6.25 in the morning. If you don't like the sounds of birds, then I suggest you just maybe turn it off. Um, but they're not going to be loud, but they are potentially in the background a bit. I love the sounds of birds. But, and also I've got a little ferret running around as well. And he was asleep when I first started this recording. And now he's just laying on the floor looking at me, all cute. So, but none of this is really relevant <laughs> to the, the thing that I'm doing. But just letting you know, there might be a little bit of background sounds. But that's okay because I'm just going to talk to you. Uh, just at the beginning I mentioned my website jasonnewlands.com every single recording pretty much that I've made since 2006 are on there for you to listen you can stream or download for free uh, there's also yeah, there's other stuff on there you can go and check it out if you, if you wanted to send me a gift or if you want to um, put a testimonial, you know, write down what you think of what I do. Um, yeah, so everything's on there, so including all of these recordings. So, I was just thinking before I started doing this, before I pressed the record button, I do like to think beforehand. And because this subject is so broad, yet so deep, there's a never-ending uh, supply of things that I could discuss. And yesterday, I talked about a lot about acceptance. I'd like to add to that. I'd like to add that I don't know how to word it really, but they're not giving yourself a hard time for suffering with these conditions, whether it be general. Uh, anxiety disorder, say like GAD, whether it's you know major stress, stress, panic attacks, whatever. And even if you're not diagnosed, it's you don't need to be diagnosed with a panic attack to know it's a panic attack. Although it's very important to get to the doctor to check yourself out to make sure that it is a panic attack that makes sense make sure that you're physically okay uh, I did that myself unfortunately I also did it at the emergency ward twice in hospital thinking I was having a heart attack but I wasn't it was a panic attack so and that guilt the guilt that I had was awful because if you go into hospital, especially if you're a little bit older, I'd say probably over 40, um, the hospital will take it more seriously if you've got a pain in your chest. Um, they take it seriously, I think, at any age, but much more if you're middle-aged. So I went into the emergency ward at, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the evening and I got seen within about 5 minutes and the place 
it wasn't full, but there was pretty good 25, 30, pretty about 25 people waiting. And I got seen really quickly. It was pretty much um, me and the child that got sore, because children get seen quicker as well. And straight away, I felt guilty, which worsened how I was feeling. And I'll tell you what's really weird. Part of me hoped that it was a heart condition rather than a panic attack. Because then I could have medication and I could get help with it and I could get it fixed instead of feeling like I was being controlled by this outside force which is what it almost felt like like I was a puppet <laughs> you know like this like evil puppeteer thinking oh what should we do now right he's in a bookshop looking at books no reason to feel stressful anxiety you know bookshops are my favourite place love books let's give him a panic attack now while he's looking at our books which happened to me and it felt I don't know about you in your situation it almost feels or it felt like I was being manipulated by a puppeteer and it was horrible now when I say I actually felt guilty afterwards as well thinking I'll oh, hope it's a heart condition part of me thinking rather than a panic attack then I feel guilty for that because for all those people that have heart conditions what a horrible thing to be thinking these people that are going through this and here's me almost minimising it that's how I was thinking in my head uh, it's a weird weird situation I just didn't want to be in a hospital for no reason I didn't want to because I'd already done it before the first time I did it it was horrible but the second time I was thinking oh and again did the ECG blood test heart monitor well, I don't know whatever it is they do I was fine just a panic attack and admittedly the panic attack kind of ended when I knew that it was a panic attack which is weird because previously other times when I knew it was a panic attack that didn't seem to be the solution but when I thought I was having a heart attack it changed how I was feeling when I got told that I wasn't having a heart attack and I was fine so maybe there was something about having a professional doctor telling me that I was okay because I don't know about you or where you live but where I live I've been raised to pretty much look up to doctors like they're this all powerful know everything kind of person someone that you can trust your life with someone that you trust your child's life with and you know like the they're one of the most important people in society doctors they're at the top of the list you know they're so I've always had that trust so maybe hearing the doctor say to me you're fine 
you're okay. You're going to be okay. Help me to relax. And I believed what he said. And I started to feel okay. Tinged with, you know, the guilt. Huge amount of guilt. It made it worse on the second time because I was sitting in a, like a, a bed where they examine you. Opposite me, I uh, said so this was late at night, opposite me there was a man, well actually it might have been a woman sitting in a bed, very elderly, with the husband holding her hand. which increased my guilt. Why was I taking up the doctor's time when that lady required it much more urgently? And of course, everybody else that was waiting in the emergency ward, in my mind, needed it more than I did. And I remember walking out and walking through the emergency waiting room, seeing people that I'd kind of glimpsed before when I was waiting there for five minutes, still waiting there, possibly been waiting there for a couple of hours. And I was embarrassed. I almost felt like I'd walking through without my trousers on I just put my head down and I just I couldn't look at anyone I felt like a fraud and part of the reason I'm telling you this is first of all you may relate to this you may have had similar experiences Secondly, if you have, or if you have a do in the future, the fact is, you're not a fraud. I wasn't a fraud. You have no reason to feel guilty, and I had no reason to feel guilty. You deserve medical attention as much as anybody else and so did I looking at it from a different angle as well that experience could have kind of had the cause in my mind to avoid ever going back to the hospital so what happens you know in the future if I do have pains in my chest and it isn't anxiety and I don't go to the hospital because I don't want to be wasting you know resources and wasting the doctor's time and I don't want to feel guilty or feel embarrassed which means I could end up well in a bad way and I say no no to that no to that for me no to that for you the hospital doctors they are there for all of us And just because anxiety can't be seen, just because stress and panic can't be seen, it is an illness.
because you know there's a lot of people out there that go into hospital have a medical treatment and their medical condition has been brought on by stress they don't know it's been caught on, brought on by stress the doctors don't know it's been brought on by stress but they're being treated and they're not feeling guilty hopefully they're not feeling guilty they're not embarrassed because they've got a physical condition that can be seen by the doctors through x-rays or you know for whatever however way it can be seen so someone working 100 hours a week for 10 years solid might drop down and have major physical problems because of the stress of doing that but they may not you know connect the two I might have mentioned before that in 1990 between I think October oh, when was it October 94 to probably September 95 I was physically ill with stomach problems bleeding trouble eating all kinds of it's really awful and I got tested I got cream to put on me in me medication and in the end I got tested got my organs all tested x-rays blood tests and I was told at the end by two specialists sitting in a big office in the hospital it's stress now for me I knew I'd be going through a really big depression in that, in that, in that, that summer of 95 but part of the depression was feeling ill because I felt so physically sick most of the time that uh, I imagine I lost quite a bit of weight as well and that's what I attributed to my depression and I said well, what can be done I've got this stress you know I thought I must, I must have an ulcer or something in there you know nothing I had an ectopic thing where you know down the throat and x-rays camera all that stuff nothing nothing wrong with me at all I think I was annoying them but other than that nothing put me on antidepressants symptoms cleared up and I put weight on as well so very acutely aware that stress can cause physical illness not just physical illness that can be diagnosed but illness that the doctors don't even know what's wrong so as far as feeling guilty get rid of that feeling please it's not useful it's not helpful I think guilt just leads to more guilt why should anybody me, you or anybody ever ever feel guilty for being ill we're all allowed to to be ill that's your human right we're allowed to sleep go to the toilet eat be ill feel well breathe you know basic things everybody gets ill at some point at different levels of course but we're allowed to be ill without feeling guilty 
or feeling ashamed or feeling that we're taking the time, you know, the doctor's time away from somebody else more deserving. How is that going to help your stress? It's going to be the opposite, I imagine. The opposite reaction. And I'm using my own experiences because... Well, it's real. It's, you know, it's what's happened to me. But even when it comes to working, I had a job in a call centre, which is when the, the, the real panic attacks in 2002, November, when that really started. So I had panic attacks, panic, stress, anxiety, depression, or whatever, since I was a kid. But this was really like the worst thing I didn't know what was how I thought I was, my head was going to explode literally and it didn't thankfully and I was actually I was on the phone to a customer at the time and I just just had to put the phone down and run out and uh I had a couple of weeks off work after I tried to stay for a couple of weeks and it just got worse and basically I went up to my boss and I said to him I took him to one side I said look I'm really feeling ill I don't know what's going on and I hadn't seen a doctor at this point I was just hoping it was a one off then it happened again and you know, a couple of days later, and then just then it got more often. And I said to him, "Look, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having, you know, I couldn't even explain it. I just said I feel really weird, and I don't feel well." And he he just smiled at me. I think he said, "Like, well, we better get back onto the phones then." And I said, "No, I'm." I, w I did go back and then I said and I, I'm going home and I went home and I didn't go back for two weeks and my boss I phoned him he actually said and I might have mentioned this he said uh, oh if you if you don't come back to work soon you're going to have a disciplinary for having so much time off now some people would take that and I probably would have done when I was younger I'll be honest with you if I was probably 18, 19 maybe 20 I would have took that on the chin and thought oh well, I better get back to work because I'm in case I get sacked but because I was 32 I was probably a little bit more been working for a long time at that point and I thought no I'm not going to be pushed around by him so I called the human resources and I told them exactly what he said to me and I said to them I will no longer deal with him I will deal with the human resources and I think he ended up getting a disciplinary or at least got told off. So, and that was more because of somebody else not understanding or not even attempting to understand um, about anxiety or panic. And I've met, I've met a lot of people over the years that have never been ill other than maybe a cold you know maybe a broken bone but that's not an illness is it it's just painful 
So some people have never actually been ill. So they're unable to empathize. But I find that strange because even as a child I was around people that were ill. Most children generally get to see grandparents or you know, great great grandparents or whatever pass away and maybe be ill. You see stuff on telly, you watch soap operas and you think there'd be a bit of a bit of empathy there, a bit of a little bit of understanding that people are ill and get ill sometimes. that can be frustrating but not it's not fair for you to put that on yourself it's not fair for you to have guilt to, to feel guilty for for what for being human that stress anxiety panic is an illness it is a mental illness and I know that the term mental illness is its quite a horrible term really, isn't it? It's like, say, it's, it's like packaging everyone together. Like someone that's um, locked up, you know, with extreme, extreme, like, condition, comparing that condition to someone that's uh, struggling to get on a bus because of the anxiety and it's it's a different thing but it's categorised within the same category now it didn't used to be I don't think so much but now and nowadays people call it mental health like it's oh he's got mental health doesn't even make sense mental health what mental health issues mental health problems mental health disabilities mental health illness you know so the term mental illness is sounds horrible saying that someone's mentally ill doesn't sound right when you put it together with anxiety but it is a mental health issue it's to do with the brain it's that word mental isn't it it's it's just that word ben mental it's got such a negative connotation it's so it's it's almost a swear word, isn't it, really? It, you know, you call someone, oh, you're mental, you are. That's, in some cases, that's like the worst thing you can say to somebody. Say to, to use that as a, an insult, oh, you're mentally ill. That's a pretty awful insult, isn't it? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being mentally ill. Well, it's 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 horrible for the person and for the family. But technically, I'm mentally ill. I've got bipolar, emotionally unstable personality traits, whatever. So that's a mental illness. But I'm, you know, I'm not locked up. I can function. Um, some of the time, not all of the time, probably most of the, I don't know, a, a degree of the time, I'm functioning perfectly. Sometimes I can't function at all. But and that's when I don't make recordings. So I'm never going to be making a recording when, when I'm not in the right space because it doesn't really fit. 
but you know what? Stress, anxiety, panic. It's nothing to feel guilty about. And I do wonder whether or not those that have felt guilty in the past, whether that's held back, whether it's held them back from recovery, or maybe it's made their condition worse, having that feeling of guilt. It's almost like, this might sound like a weird statement, but it's almost like they don't deserve to be ill. And you could say, well, no one deserves to be ill. But on the other side, we all deserve the same things as everyone else. Everyone gets ill at times. Everybody. And everyone gets well at times. Pretty much everyone gets angry. Everyone falls in love. Everyone feels hungry. Everyone needs to go to the toilet. Everyone needs to go to sleep. It's just part of being alive. Part of this great tapestry of life but it doesn't last not forever and even long term conditions you know apparently bipolar is a lifelong condition but the feeling the you know say the feeling of hopelessness that I get sometimes it doesn't last and as long as I can hold on to that remembering that it's not going to last I'll be okay and to not not take action in those low moments or high moments even to not sort of to kind of be able to step back to step back from that to step back take a breath have some distance It's like it's much easier to talk to someone that's got really bad breath if you're a little bit away from them. They might be the most lovely person in the world. You love them to bits, but you don't want to be too close. You need to have a little bit of distance and the conversation can flow nicely. That might seem a bit of flippant, a bit of a flippant comment, but I do like flipping, flipping, flippantness. to get rid of that guilt or you could feel guilty for feeling guilty which would be a weird one wouldn't it get rid of the guilt there is nothing to feel guilty for when it comes to being having an illness a temporary illness stress, anxiety panic is temporary it's temporary not just temporary long term but temporary short term all panic attacks end always they always do every feeling ends everything doesn't matter if it's the most beautiful feeling in the world or the, the worst feeling every feeling ends admittedly doesn't seem that way at the time but every feeling does end so try and get rid of that guilt let it go if anything, what would be the opposite to guilt? Wouldn't it be, I suppose pride would be the opposite, wouldn't it? So I'm not a big fan of pride as such. But the idea of feeling good about something you've done and that appeals to me. Appreciating yourself. That seems like a good idea. 
So, what's stopping you from, or what's stopping me, or any of us, from after the event, whether it's panic, whether it's uh, depression, anxiety, whatever the issue is, after the event, congratulating ourselves for getting through it coming out the other end maybe feeling good because it, the panic didn't last as long as the previous one the previous time so it's kind of flipping it on its head a little bit from guilt to Gratitude, I suppose. And it seems weird, like the idea, what do you mean gratitude? I don't feel grateful for stress and anxiety and panic. It's not about feeling grateful for that. It's about feeling grateful that you overcame that. You got through to the other side. Because if you've done it once, you can do it every time. And the fact is, if you're listening to this, you have done it every time every single stress occasion or panic any part any any anxiety you've had you've come out the other end because you're listening to this you must have come out the other end so maybe having some gratitude but the gratitude is towards yourself towards you personally you know patting yourself on the back why not unlikely anyone else is going to pat you on the back for getting through an anxiety episode so why not do it yourself get in touch with some nice feelings I mean What's the point in experiencing crappy feelings if you're not going to experience some nice feelings as well? That's only fair. Because we have the ability to feel pretty much any feeling that's available. It's all there for us to feel. So why why give favour to the crappy feelings? You need to let the nice feelings as well. Let them in. Experience those. And as you know, the more nice feelings you have, the more relaxing feelings you have. It dilutes future stresses and anxiety. It dilutes it. It gives your brain the message is your body the message that actually this is what you want feeling grateful towards yourself feeling relaxed feeling calm that's what you want that's what you want more of because that's what you're experiencing and that's what you're thinking about you're giving that message to yourself that you want more of that because that's what you're thinking about and the more time you spend thinking about feeling relaxed feeling calm the more time you think about feeling relaxed in the future feeling relaxed and calm in situations that maybe in the past you didn't gives your mind and your body that suggestion of what you want not what you don't want which allows you to almost prepare for feeling comfortable and relaxed prepare to feel happier and to recover Because to 
is all just temporary. So it's up to you, but I think it's time to let the guilt go. Drop it on the floor, kick it in the sea, whatever you want to do with it. I'll let it go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. So I wish you well. And remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.